Psalms 126, the Song of Degree. <clears throat> now, John Wesley says that Ezra is a writer, or could be the author of this song. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Amazement. That God has looked upon them and brought them back to the, to the promised land after their sin, after they've been in Babylon. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, it's the testimony to the unsaved, the Gentiles, the Lord has done great things for us. And what a wonder it was to when you read Ezra and Nehemiah, how, they, how he brought them from Babylon all the way back to the land and built the temple and the foundations and built the city and the walls. And were established there. And with modifications and building of, of Herod, Jesus walked in, in the temple that is built in Ezra. And then they sinned, rebelled against God, and everything was destroyed in 70 AD under Titus. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Remarkable story. And when you study Ezra and Nehemiah, that they carried in caravans gold and silver and precious items. And when they got to Jerusalem, it was all there. Even the Apostle Paul says that the perils of his life were robbers. And yet there were no robbers on the way to, to the promised land. Everything was, was accounted and everything was given. And it was a joyful time. And when the, the foundation was set up, there was rejoicing and there were tears. At the same time. And they were glad. The tears were ashamed that they remembered the old temple. And because of their sins. And it was tears that God had given them deliverance. That the fact is when Ezra re realizes that they were falling into the sins of Solomon. That there needed to be a national repentance. A national preaching against sin that we are will end up right back where we were if we don't get right. Turn again our captivity. And those would be those that are remaining in Babylon. And maybe the ones that come when Nehemiah comes in his time. When Ezra's there in the land, there are still people in Babylon. Not all went. As the streams in the south, I don't understand what the streams in the south are. Uh, just a flowing of water. Let there be a flowing of Israelites, the children of Jacob, returning to the land. Israel has sinned, but God has given them deliverance. Because it says they have sold in tears shall reap in joy. Listen, they sinned. They were carried to Babylon by an army, by destruction of their home, by the destruction of their temple. Utter destruction. And now they are in joy because God loves them. They are in destruction today. Because they reject what God has told them to do. Yet but one day there will be joy. In the Lord. In the land. Where the temple will be. Where the Lord Jesus Christ will be. 
He that goes forth and weeping. Going forth means he, he's going, he's, he's moving and weeping. Bearing precious seed. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. Bringing his sheaves with him. Now we've been talking about in context the children of Israel. He that goeth forth weeping, heading back to the promised land. Bearing precious seed, the Jews, the Israelites, the apple of God's eye. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, coming into the land, settling down, doing what's right. Bringing his sheaves with him. Now Joseph's dream in Genesis 37, 7. Liken him and his 11 brothers to sheaves. It is the growing and, and flourishing in the land, the children of Israel. Under God's deliverance. And no more under Gentile rule, which they kept under. But one day they will be under the Lord Jesus Christ. And forever under God. With no other rule above them than that what it was supposed to be before King Saul. God never wanted them to have a human king. Samuel did not like when they said, we want a king like the nation. And then when Christ came up to be judged, they cried out, we have no king but Caesar. Well, one day they'll have no king but God. And they'll desire no other. Now, I know we use five and six as a Soul winning. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. It's a tearful thing. When you're dealing with lost people. And things that will happen will bring tears to you. Hurt. He that goes forth and weepeth. Bearing precious seed. And you can find that in Mark chapter 4. The parable of the sower. The, the seed is the word of God. So it is precious seed. It is the gospel. Shall doubtless come again rejoicing. What's the rejoicing? Bringing his sheaves with him to find out those who did get saved. And when we read the, the Mark chapter 4, the parable of the story, he throws it all out and there are uh, four or five events which happen. And most of them are not to repentance and turning to God. But two are. And one of them, they'll get saved, but then they'll turn away from God. And one, and one will yet bear seed, seed 30-fold, 100-fold. But the contents of the chapter is about those Jews that are in the land. Now, that has not fulfilled yet, because they were in the land, but they're out of the land. And now they are having a war in the land. But when the Lord Jesus Christ settles them down in the millennium, even after that, the millennium, I mean, the Satan rises up, at least the Third World War, at least. World War Four. Uh, you count the the horsemen, the horsemen in uh, chapter five of Revelation. But in eternity, when they get the new earth and in New Jerusalem, will God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit sit as their king? It says that when Jesus Christ comes back upon his horse. King of kings and Lord of lords. 
Imagine Israel's race producing children in eternity without no sin. You go back and read the story of Leah and Rachel and the problems that they had with Joseph bearing those boys. It got to the point where here, take my hand, man, and here, you know, oh, pomegranates, oh, you can have him tonight. One boy goes and, and sleeps with, with his uh, father's wife. Listen, there'll be no sin, there'll be no heartaches, there'll be no pain, there'll be no sorrow, there'll be no sin in eternity. And that nation will never reject God again, will be forever faithful to God, and that will be pleasing to God. And the only way you can get that is if Satan is gone and wiped away. There's another captivity, and it's happening now. Israel is all over the world. And yet God says, I will gather them up. And the captivity yet to happen under the Antichrist is nothing compared to what they were in Babylon. They will be literally hunted. There will be a reward, dead or alive. Emphasis on dead. Their heads will be chopped off. Their blood will be drank. As they have to run away from their land. Cross over to Edom into Salopetra. While Satan chases them. And unlike the wilderness where God fed them with bread of heaven. They're going to eat that bread with the perils of their life. And then you go back and read when the Lord turned to get. Now I'm not saying this, this hasn't happened in Psalm 126. And it could be Ezra that wrote it. But wait for the next captivity to happen. When the Lord turned again to captivity Zion. We were like, we were like them that dreamed. Talk about a dream with all the hardship that Antichrist is going to give in this, this world of seven years under Satan. Then was our mouths filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Satan will be, the Antichrist will be cast down. Satan will be locked up for a, for a thousand years. Then said they among the heathen. The Gentiles that maybe persecuted them, who end up to be the goat nation, or maybe the heathen that are in the millennium. The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, the Jews. And if that them in verse 2 is to the heathen, they didn't even know Jesus said that they say they helped God's people, the Jews. What do you mean we 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 helped we helped you, Lord, that were in prison? What do you mean we fed the, the, you? And Jesus said, "If you've done it unto the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me." They didn't even know what they were doing. It's a marvel. And they're not even going to be told. It, it looks like Jesus said. I mean, it's not like you're going to have people in the tribulation going on the street preaching, Hey, take care of the Jew and thou shalt be saved. That's not going to happen. The 144,000 ministers and preachers are going out. They'll be going out to the tribes of Israel, the Jews, to tell them. It ain't for the Gentiles. It's going to be your conscience to God's people. You know they're going to be God's people. Just how the hatred that Antichrist is going to have for him. It's going to be a hatred above all and any other people. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams of the south. Lord, remember the captivities we've been in before. And Lord, turn this captivity. Lord, come and save us. And that's where the Lord God will turn to his son, Lord Jesus, and say, mount up on that horse. 
And boy, will the words of Pilate come back to be. Behold your king, the king of the Jews. Oh, right, he said he was the king of the Jews. No, because when, when your Messiah comes, he's going to say, King of kings. There he is. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. It's going to be tears for the Jews. You think there was tears during World War II with Adolf Hitler? You think there's going to be tears when, when Nebuchadnezzar came into land three times? The Bible says you will not eat or drink unless you take that mark. You will not. I don't care how many canned goods you store up. The Bible says you will not eat. Now, what if you do store up canned goods of that? I have no idea. They don't have a food monitor going around your neighbors and they don't pick up any food. I don't know. But it says, the, and the word of God is true, and the word of God is right, and the word of God will come to pass. And the word of God says, you will not eat unless you receive that mark. Then I don't care what you stock up. Let me, let God be true in them. Every man a liar, the Bible says. And the joy is when the Messiah comes. He that goes forth from weeping, bearing precious seed, the word. Jesus Christ is the word. It says in Mark chapter 4 that the seed is the word. The word is Jesus Christ, John chapter 1. And he's precious. And he'll be precious in the eyes of the Jews at that point. Shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, coming back into the land with the Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoicing. You know, there's, there's, there's one place in the Bible that says that they, they rejoice so much that the land trembled. That's a lot of rejoicing. You don't even get that happen at a ball game, even though there's a lot of rejoicing. There, there's a football field, I forget which one it is, that is, an, is a bothersome event to the visiting team because if the whole team screams and hollers so much at, the, at this one end of the field, you can't even hear, hear yourself think, they say. And that is what they call the home team advantage. That you know you can't even talk to your fellow player and all that because they're and they'll do it. They'll scream and holler so much to get you so that you can't get what you're supposed to be doing. Well, you wait till the Jews shout when they see the Messiah. You wait till you see the shouting and the gloriousification and the magnificence and the, the glory of all glory. When you are here in this earth with the Lord Jesus Christ on David's throne reigning and ruling and the curse is removed. And Satan is locked up. Bringing his sheaves and again uh, uh, Genesis 37, 7 it's Joseph and his, and his 11 brothers. Scripture with scripture. Bringing the 12 sons of Jacob home. You know, Joseph should have been the line of Jesus Christ. Reuben blew it. He was the firstborn of all the firstborn of Jacob. He slept with his father's wife and Jacob cursed him. Levi, uh, uh, Simeon and Levi, the next two, blew it. Jacob cursed him for their anger for, for, for killing the city because of their uh, sister Dinah. Who is the next real first son of Jacob after Levi and Simeon? It's not Dan. 
That was a wife of a handmaid. And God doesn't look at that. Look at that as a true marriage. By the way, if you look at Dan, he, he's a type of Antichrist. The next real firstborn son would be the son of Rachel, Joseph. And it says in Psalms that uh, for whatever reason, he chose Judah. You read the scriptures, you'll find it. He overlooked Joseph. Whatever reason. And it went to Judah. And the most interesting thing, and at our church we're studying Ezra, ne I hope ne not Nehemiah, but right now we're studying Ezra. Ezra is history. Well, let me tell you something. Let me give you an interesting fact here. Are you ready? When Israel, by the order of God, goes back to the land to stay, if they're going to go back in the land of the Antichrist, then they're going to leave. Okay, get that. When they go back in the land to stay, when their prince on the white horse comes, their king, and and takes them away and gives them victory over the mean nasty dragon and and the warlords and we born again Christians that will follow the Lord Jesus Christ will be a witness to the Jews going back to the land we will be there behind the Lord Jesus Christ As their Messiah gathers them up and brings them in the land, we will not read about it. We will be there. How about that? You think Ezra is interesting? When they go back in, in, to, the, to the promised land in Ezra, there's no enemy. But the Arabians and uh, I forget, T Tobiah. All right, yeah, so what? Uh, he writes a couple letters, boom, boom, boom. And they check the records, and they say, shut up and let them build. But when we bring the Jews back into the promised land, guess who's going to be sitting there? Satan. And we're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ defeat Satan, and then the angel's going to come down and lock him up for a thousand years. How's, how's that joy? We're going to see Satan cast out of heaven permanently revelation 12 and we're going to see jesus christ bound them up for a thousand years how's that joy and we're going to see the jews seated in the land and we can thumb our nose to the united nations we can thumb our oh wait a minute no they're not they're going to be judged before the land no nations will be judged as jesus christ comes back and those that are the goat nations will be cast off in a lake of fire. So when we go into the promised land, it's going to be the nations that love the Jews and help them. And the Jews will be there. And the Bible says they will have children and they'll be playing in the streets. And you'll be able to plant seeds in that, that afternoon and harvest the seeds. And then the sun will be sevenfold and the moon will be as the sun of the of the uh, as the sunlight and all and everything this psalm is about the captivity that happened under Ezra going back from Babylon and it's going to be the, the captivity that we are going to witness them going back into the land under the Antichrist and we go in there and watch Jesus Christ kick some butt and win Read about Joel chapter two. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great. Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow 